Herr Bundespräsident, Herr Ministerpräsident, Dr. Schuster, Dr. Fürst, Your Excellencies, Honored Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. We are here today to remember the evil of this terrible place. We also remember this, the world's silence that led to this evil. And we gather with an uncomfortable awareness that anti-Semitism has returned to Europe once again. 70 years ago, as Nazi Germany was collapsing and the greatest war in history was coming to an end. The saddest irony was that the Jews, who should have been the happiest about Hitler's defeat, were not to be heard. There was no Jewish victory celebrations like those in New York or Trafalgar Square or Moscow. There was no jubilation. The reason is all around you. For Jews, the awful realization of loss suddenly set in. Mothers and fathers, aunts and uncles, grandparents, friends, children, over one million children, all gone. Half the world's Jews murdered. Right now, we stand here on one of the largest Jewish cemeteries in the world. There are no gravestones here. There are no markers. The victims buried here lost not just their lives. The Nazis took their identity away as well. When British troops entered the gates, here at Bergen-Belsen. They took pictures, and for the first time, the world finally understood the extent of the Nazi horror. We saw the bulldozers pushing naked bodies into open pits, the walking skeletons, the unbelievable sadness and loss. It has always struck me that battle-hardened soldiers who saw some of the worst combat in Europe became emotionally years later when they talked about entering Bergen-Belsen. Seventy years on, we all know about the crime. We know the perpetrators. But they were not just Germans or Austrians. There was complicity in practically every country in Europe. My own country, the United States, the beacon of liberty, shut its door to Jews, desperately trying to leave. When Jews needed help, when they begged for help, all they got was silence. Hitler saw this early on, and he knew he could do whatever he wanted, even though he told the world exactly what he intended to do, and he said it over and over again. The world was silent. Silence always emboldens tyrants. And the final outcome is all around us today. Since the day that the first British soldiers, and we thank them, cut the locks and opened the gates, we have known this story. But there is another story that is not told. I believe it is one of the most important lessons of the Holocaust. And no one ever talks about it. After the British troops 
and the international release organizations began nursing the survivors back to life, Bergen-Belsen became a DP camp, a displaced persons camp. Jews who had lived for generations in Europe as educated and productive citizens who were the victims of Nazi genocide had now become displaced persons. Displaced, what does that even mean? How does a human being become displaced? Jews became displaced because no one wanted them. After surviving Hitler's final solution, these displaced persons had two options. They could wait for the world to change the situation, or they could change it themselves. There was no great plan. It was, it was simply the Jews themselves helping themselves. It came from within them. First and foremost, Jews never sought revenge. Jews demanded no right of return to Germany or Austria or Poland or any other European country. They did not teach their children to hate Europeans or anyone else. They taught their children how to read and to do arithmetic and draw pictures. They wanted, no, they demanded one thing, that their children lead normal lives. And in spite of everything, they would try to do the same. The first newspapers in Bergen-Belsen DP camp appeared on July 12, 1945, just two months after liberation. The first book came out in September. If Jews are truly a people of the book, they certainly proved that 70 years ago. Jews immediately moved towards in great, greatest directive that comes from the Jewish religion, life. They got on with their lives. Thousands of marriages and new families emerged from these, from these ashes. Can you imagine the courage it took that a young father who lost his wife and small children choosing to move on, or the young woman who saw her husband and children murdered in front of her, choosing to continue after everything that happened to them. These people had the courage and the will to start new families between 1945 and 1950, when the DK, DP camp was closed, 2,000 children were born here. Those children became doctors, lawyers, professors, business leaders. In 1965, Elie Wiesel wrote, I quote, upon the ruins of Europe, on the scorched earth of Germany, yesterday's candidates for death began to build a Jewish future. The people of Belzin chose life, end of quote. This camp was suddenly transformed from a factory of death to a factory of life, with schools, libraries, small orchestra, and not one, but two theater companies. There were classes in literature and art and history. These people who had suffered so much, these people knew what they wanted. This discarded refuge had a secret. They never saw themselves as discarded refuge. In their minds, they were never displaced. These people had a plan and they had dreams. One of these dreams was a land of their own where they would never again be subject to the whims, they would go back to their ancient homeland, the one they dreamed of and spoke of for 2,000 years. They walked away from Bergen-Belsen and never looked back. 
Within five years, the DP camp disappeared. Today, most people don't even know they existed because Jews refuse to be displaced persons. They refuse to be victims. There is something else. Jews all over, all over the world helped the fellow Jews get back on their feet. They were never used as political pawns as we see today. Much of what was happened here was due to the tireless efforts of the Jewish leader of the DP camp, Joseph Rosensoft, who insisted on the outset that the survivors be treated with the utmost respect by their liberators. In 1946, Joseph and Dr. Hadassah Rosensoft, a young dentist who helped save 149 children on the terrible winter of 1944 to 45, were married here. Their son, Menachem Rosenseft, lawyer, scholar, and my friend, who was born right here in 1948, is here today. There is an old Zionist slogan. If you will it, it is no dream. Here at Bergen-Belsen, the Jewish victims of the Nazi atrocities willed themselves back to life. And it was no dream. From the ashes of the terrible place, the Jewish people moved on. I mean, but tragically, seven years later, the world is not moving on. It is moving backward. Inconceivably, we appear to be descending in the same dangerous hell where we found ourselves before. In 2015, we see anti-Semitism anti rising again in Europe. Once again, anti-Semites twist the truth. They deny importance of the, what happened. Jews, Jews make to society. That society, the fact is, whenever Jews are allowed to live freely, those countries prosper. Jews win Nobel Prizes. Jews build. Jews don't tear down. Anti-Semites tear down. Anti-Semites destroy. They create nothing. They save no one. Today, 70 years after the camp was liberated, we hear the same anti-Semitic lies. Today, a Jewish boy wearing a yarmulke cannot walk down the street in Paris or London or Copenhagen without fearing for his life. Right-wing neo-Nazi groups are winning seats in Parliament in Hungary and in Greece. Iranian leaders repeatedly promise to wipe Israel from the pages of time. Seventy years ago, Jews learned the hard way that when someone tells you they want to kill you, you better take them seriously. We've gone down the same road during my lifetime, and we are standing on the result. To be here at Bergen-Belsen and shout against the past while doing nothing about the present is not just wrong, it is outrageous and it's immoral. But there is a big difference between 2015 and the past. Today, there is a vibrant and powerful Jewish state of Israel that has proven again and again the capacity to defend itself and Jews everywhere. And there is a strong and active World Jewish Congress that will not let these threats go unchallenged. To all the people here today who survived, you have upheld the highest traditions of Judaism. Many years ago, you were confronted with a great problem. And you walked out of this terrible place with dignity. The lives you have led are examples the entire world should follow. 
You have done more than your share. So when you leave this place one last time, know this. There is a younger generation of Jews that are committed to make sure that the Jewish people never fell, fall victim again to this kind of evil. We looked up to you and we have, and we find, um, we find inspiration. Now, as never, we will not let you down. We will never let you down. I want you to know that I will not let you down. This is my, this is my solemn promise to you that I make to you today. We will not let you down. Thank you.